One controversial aspect of civil liberties we haven't touched on yet is surveillance. Let's start with a definition so we know what we're talking about. Surveillance is the act of carefully watching a person or place, especially one that's suspected. Well, I'm sure we all have our own opinions on this. Civil liberties groups in most countries are concerned that we're becoming a so-called surveillance culture. That in the name of national and personal security, national governments are obtaining detailed information on their citizens and tracking their movements, internet use, financial transactions and so on. And it's not just the government. Today it's possible for savvy private organisations to get information on individuals from different sources and build a kind of composite picture, a profile, if you will. Some people think that this is fine, if it helps the government or if their local supermarket knows their shopping habits, they shouldn't have anything to hide, right? But most people don't like it. They feel they've become part of an Orwellian Big Brother culture that it's a gross intrusion of privacy. Are they right? Well, you can judge for yourselves because I'm going to take you through some of the surveillance mechanisms that are out there. We'll start by looking at a few of the more familiar ones and then move on to some more recent and technically sophisticated methods. First up, cameras. Today, these are everywhere. Closed circuit TV cameras are in stores monitoring shoplifters, in cash machines identifying fraud gangs, and on public transportation watching vandals and thugs. But of course, they're also watching perfectly ordinary, innocent people like you and me going about their daily lives, completely unaware that they're being monitored. You know, today, in the US, for example, there are probably upwards of six million surveillance cameras. In New York City alone, they've increased 50% in the past few years. And in Britain, that figure is 6.5 million cameras. That's about one camera for every 10 people recording each citizen up to 300 times a day. Then there are traffic-based cameras monitoring vehicles via their registration numbers. Right now, the UK government is considering recording all car journeys taken on main roads as a deterrent to terrorism and crime generally. These cameras are being used way beyond their original purpose. It's downright invasive. Then we have credit card transactions. We're all familiar with this one, I'm sure. Every time we use a credit or debit card, we're making an announcement of where we are, how much we're spending and on what. Again, useful for crime busting when, say, unusually large amounts of money are suddenly spent uncharacteristically. But do we really want people to know this stuff? Do we want just anyone having access to our financial records? Next up, biometric facial recognition, which uses computer programs to analyze images of human faces for identification purposes. And this is done by taking an image, say, from a photo or video frame, then measuring facial characteristics, like the distance between your eyes and the length of your nose, for instance. Then they create a template which the software can compare with another image, like of a person going through airport security. If there's a match, then, hey presto, that person gets pulled aside for questioning. They've got this system operating at a number of airports. It's also been used at major sporting events like the Olympics and the Super Bowl, where pictures were taken of every person entering the stadium and then compared against a database. OK, let's look at a couple of more recent and sophisticated surveillance techniques. Cell phone surveillance technology and drones. Now, the police using records of incoming and outgoing cell phone calls to solve crimes is pretty old news, right? But recently things have taken a more ominous turn in the form of cell phone surveillance technology. There is now a sophisticated portable spy device able to track cell phone signals inside vehicles, homes and insulated buildings. These trackers act as fake cell phone towers, allowing police or other government investigators to pinpoint the location of a targeted cell phone by extracting email and other data from it. When a suspect makes a call, the device tricks the phone into sending its signal back to the police. 
which is okay if the user is a criminal. However, the device also extracts data off thousands of other cell phones in the area. Finally, there are drones. Now, drones are small, camera-equipped quadcopters, basically fancy mini-helicopters. You now see them in a lot of places. They've become increasingly fashionable, and some people simply see them as extravagant toys. But, and it's a big but, these toys can also have a dark side to them. Already, drones are used in some airports to allow authorities to monitor events on the ground, deter crime, and identify offenders. And drone footage has been used to solve crimes, same as closed-circuit TV cameras. And some of us may see that as acceptable. But get this, anybody, and I do mean anybody, can buy one of these drones, and there's nothing really stopping them from spying on whoever they wish. And although there's legislation governing their use, most people are either unaware of it or ignorant of it. So again, there's another real potential threat to our privacy, our civil liberties. Now, all the instances of surveillance I've mentioned, closed circuit TV cameras, credit card tracking, biometric facial recognition, phone surveillance, and drones. They're all products of the digital age, of technology that's now so easily available that it's just too simple and tempting for security agencies and commercial organizations not to take advantage of it. And here's the catch. Just to function in today's world requires us, increasingly, to expose ourselves to these threats against our privacy. We basically have no choice. Let's face it. How many of us these days can really manage without a credit card, an ID card, email, or a cell phone? It's almost as if, well, if we want to have these things, then we have to accept the surveillance that goes with them, right? Now, I'm no conspiracy theorist, but, like many people, I don't believe all this surveillance is for our own good. I don't believe that those of us who have nothing to hide have nothing to fear. So it's reassuring that there are organisations out there protecting the rights of ordinary citizens like you and me. Let me wrap up with a quote from Mark Rottenberg, President of the Electronic Privacy Information Centre, or EPIC who says that the kind of open-ended surveillance we are now seeing is, quote, the digital electronic equivalent of allowing police to go through your home without a warrant. Now that's a sobering thought, wouldn't you say?